One of the beautiful things about Access is other Microsoft products like Excel, Word, and PowerPoint. You can make a document with images and formatting just the way you want with Microsoft Word and then merge data from Access. Hi, this is Crystal. This is a Word document and this is an Access database. It could also be an Excel workbook or other data source. When you open the Word document, since it's linked to an external data source, you see that an SQL statement wants to execute. All fields will be selected from a table called Mail Merge. It'll be sorted by first name and then last name in ascending order. Name first last is a field name. What you don't see here is connection information for the data source. In this case, that would be the path and file name of the Access database. If you move or rename the database or open the Word document on another machine, you'll be prompted to change the connection for the data source. If you leave this dialog box on the default value of no, Word won't get the data using the SQL statement, and it will open without a data source. To run the SQL and get the data, choose Yes. When the document opens, you see images and text in a way that Access has a hard time doing. Since this is an invitation for an Independence Day party, there is an American flag in the background. This was actually drawn using VBA and rendered on an access report. The curvy text is word art. Below that is a two-column table, and then comes the text of the letter. When it comes to making documents pretty, Word is where you want to be. This data is being merged into the Word document from fields in the Access database. And the data wouldn't necessarily have to be in Access. Access can link to all kinds of other formats, like SQL Server, Oracle, text files, Excel spreadsheets and ranges, and a whole lot more. Access is Access. This is the name and address that will also go on the envelope. The nickname is used in the salutation, or it would be the first name. When you click somewhere in a field, there is gray shading, and that's because the options are set to show field shading when selected. At the bottom, there are fields that only show if certain conditions are true. This contact is a friend, so they're invited to the after party. They're also a close friend, so they're invited to bring a sleeping bag for camping. On the Mailings ribbon tab in the Preview Results group, you can go to another record and see what the results will look like. Here are the buttons to go to First, Previous, Next, or Last record. You can also type a specific record number and press Enter. This is the tenth record for the way they're sorted. So the record number is not like a real record number that stays with the record like an ID. It's just the order that they're in. You can see what the information from different records will look like in your document. Now I'll go to the first record. A&M Surplus is a supplier. Everyone who works there is invited to the fun and music during the day, but not the after party, so the invitation doesn't include conditional text. The third record is for Aldo, who is also invited to the after party, but not the campout. Let's go backstage to the word options and see how we can control how fields will look. Word Options, Advanced, under Show Document Content, there is a checkbox to show field codes and an option for field shading. I'm checking the box to show field codes instead of their values. 
and I'm going to change the field shading from when selected to always. Now you can see all the logic that we're going to build together from scratch in just a minute. Displaying the field codes takes more space, and some of the text appears to go to a second page. We didn't have a second page before. When the results show, it will be all on one page again. Now I'm just going to go back and set the options to what I usually keep them at. Field shading when selected and uncheck the box to show the field code so you can see results again. Now I'm going to close the document. This is the way it was before the merge codes went in. At the top is a background image of the American flag that's set to display behind text. The wavy art was done with word art and below that is a two column table. You can see grid lines if you select View Grid Lines on the Table Tools Layout ribbon. There is some temporary text to indicate where field codes should go. The beauty of using Word to write this is that it's easy to write things in Word. Word is Word, so it's easy to write words. Access is good at managing data. And it would be hard to get a report to look exactly like this. I mean, you could do it, but it's much easier to do in Microsoft Word. In the Access database, there's a temporary table called Mail Merge, and I'll explain why it's a temporary table later on. It has the information we need for the Mail Merge document in Word. These are the fields that we'll be using from Access. Who to is the name to use in the salutation. Name first last is the name for the address block. Mail address is the mailing address with line breaks. Text number is an integer of 0, 1, or 2 in this case to indicate what conditional text will be printed. Now let's add the merge fields to the Word document. First, we need to specify that the data will come from Access. Let's start a mail merge. Click Start Mail Merge and select Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard. A mail merge pane opens on the right with steps. For Select Document Type, choose letters, which is the default, so you don't have to change anything. And this will send letters to a group of people. Click Next. For Select Starting Document, choose Use the Current Document, also the default, and click Next. For Select Recipients, this is where Access is going to come in. Choose Use an Existing List, which is also the default, and then click Browse. A dialog box pops up to collect the name of the data source. Navigate to the Access database to use as a source for your merge. And OK. You'll then be presented with a list of tables and queries to pick from, and hence the temporary table you might have a problem with this step. Perhaps you created a query, but it isn't on the list to pick from. There's a way to specify the SQL statement, but that's beyond what we're covering today, so we need something that will be on the list. So what do you do? Close your Word document, as it is, with a new name. Just keep it the way it was before you added any merge fields in case you want to go back to it that way. The quick thing to do is open the Access database and create a temporary table to use, and that's what was done in this case. The table is called Mail Merge. Then, when you open Word again, start the Mail Merge wizard, 
click next through the steps you've already done until you get to browse for the data source. Then pick your temporary table. Mail Merge. In this dialog box, you can also sort. This list will be sorted by first name and then by last name. These fields are combined into a field called Name First Last. Note that you can also do other things here, like filter and find duplicates. Now we're going to insert our first merge field. Let's go to where we want something to be replaced. We need a name here, so I'll just highlight that since I want it to go away when I insert the merge field. The ribbon we're going to be using for all of these steps is Mailings. Choose Insert Merge Field from the ribbon. Choose the field we want, Name First Last. The text we had before is gone because it was selected when we did this, and instead we see the field name inside double angle brackets. If field codes were showing, we'd see curly brackets, which are also called braces, around a keyword called merge field, and then the name of the merge field. And there's a space in between everything. Now let's replace the mailing address. Select the temporary text. Again, choose Insert Merge Field, and this time we're picking Mail Address. This text has multiple lines, and it's in a table, so there's room for it to grow. The next place we have text to merge is in the salutation. Here we're going to Insert Who To. Now comes the tricky part, the conditional text at the bottom. We'll write an if statement, go to the end of the document, and press Control F9 to add a field. Word will add the empty set of braces, or curly brackets, to mark where the field starts and ends, and there will be two spaces between them. Click inside the braces after the first space to position the cursor. Type the word IF and then a space. And then from the ribbon, insert merge field and choose text number. This is a number field inside the Access database that is a zero for just a normal document, one for the first conditional text, and two for the first and the second. If it's anything but a normal contact, then they're going to be invited to the after party. But now we can't see anything we just put in there. We need to see the field codes. So we're going back to Options, Advanced, in the Show Document Content section, we're checking the box to show field codes instead of their values. We could also change the field shading. I almost always set it to when selected. Sometimes always. And very occasionally never, but I really never use never. Now we can see what we're doing again. After if and then the merge field name type space greater than sign space zero. That's the condition to test. We need a true part and a false part. We know that they will be text. So for right now, we're just going to enter quote quote space quote quote and then we'll come back later and fill in what we want between the quotes if we want anything. Inside the first set of quotes for true, paste the text that we've already written in Word. So I'll just go up, select it, cut it, go between the quotes, and paste it. What we want between the quotes for the false part is absolutely nothing, so we'll leave it as it is. We'll also 
write a condition for the last sentence. That one will show if the text number is greater than 1. Print the sentence if it's true, but nothing if it's false. Remember, everything must be delimited with the space character, including inside the field braces. And no commas, at least not for separating. You could have them inside the text that you want to display. Save your letter with a new name. Now let's view the results. Turn the display of field codes off in the options so we can see the results. On the ribbon, toggle Preview Results On. Click the triangles around the record number on the ribbon to move between records and spot check the results. To do the actual merge, click Finish and Merge on the ribbon. If you're still in the step-by-step -step wizard, you can next next until you get to this part also. We're going to choose Edit Individual Documents and then All Records. A new Word document is created with the results of the merge. There's one page for every record since our document was one page long. Obviously, this letter is fictional in a time when there's no pandemic and people can gather together without fear of each other. This has been a hard year. If you've suffered or lost loved ones, my heart is with you. Even though this lesson isn't about Excel, I'd like to dedicate it to Smitty, a great trainer and friend. If you're building an application and want me to connect to you and help you, I'd love to do that. Email me. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we all get better.